Now it's time to consider what happens to the mass capacitor when we apply external potential. So the basic equation we reached about applying a total potential across the MOS capacitor is that this potential, which is measured as VGB, where G stands for gate and B stands for body, is going to be divided between the oxide, the surface of the semiconductor and flat band potential. So there will be a drop of V oxide on the oxide, a drop of V surface on the surface of the substrate, because the rest of the substrate will be flat, and then there is also a difference that is made up by the flat band potential. Now, let's look at the band diagram when we apply an external potential. When we apply an external potential, the Fermi level will not be constant. As we talked about when we uh, discussed different materials, uh, the uh, metals or, or conductors will have a Fermi level that is constant. It will refuse to move because of their uh, infinite conductivity and therefore the Fermi level of the polysilicon is going to be constant and is going to remain at the same point. What's going to happen is that the Fermi level on the other side of the oxide on the side of the substrate is going to move and it's going to move by as much as we have applied an external potential. So it's going to move by QVGB. In this case we are assuming that we have applied a positive potential to the body and the negative potential to the uh, gate. We can see this because the energy of the body has moved down relative to the gate and we know that there's a negative in the relationship between energy and potential. If we look at the vacuum level, we will find that the vacuum level is showing a, uh, an energy difference, difference of Q into VGB minus V flat band. So the uh, vacuum level is not going to show the same difference as the Fermi level shows. Uh, that is because in the, in, the, in the equilibrium band diagram, the vacuum level is not constant. The vacuum level shows some bending, and this bending is by the amount V flat band. And so when we add an external potential, it's going to add to or subtract from this original bending. Now, it's important to notice that the amount of difference that shows up on the Fermi levels, which is this, is always going to be... Uh, equal to the externally applied potential, whereas the amount of difference in the vacuum level is not necessarily going to reflect the, uh, the uh, applied external potential, because the vacuum level is constant, not in equilibrium, but in the flat band condition, and the flat band condition is not a condition of thermal equilibrium. So when we apply a positive potential to the body, we are applying a negative potential to the gate. And so this negative potential to the gate is going to cause an attractive force on uh, positive charge carriers in the substrate. So it's going to attract holes towards the uh, interface of the substrate and the oxide. And so the substrate is p-type to begin with. We can see this due to the difference between the, uh, uh, to the due to the closeness of the Fermi level to the uh, valence band edge. But when we apply uh, the positive potential to the body, we are attracting more holes towards the interface. And so we are increasing the density of holes near the interface relative to the density of holes in the depth of the body. So we call this the body concentration uh, or the deep bulk concentration of holes. And this is the concentration that we also see at the surface in flat band condition. What we see at the surface here is a higher concentration of electrons. And so we call this mode of the MOS capacitor the accumulation mode, because we are accumulating uh, the majority charge carriers that exist in the body near the surface. So the body naturally contains holes. There's a level of holes that we see in equilibrium. There's a level of holes that we see deep in the bulk. When we see more holes near the surface, then we see uh, deep in the bulk, we call this accumulation mode. Sometimes we also define it as when we see more holes near the surface relative to what we see during equilibrium. So let's talk about how to obtain the hole concentration uh, near the surface uh, in accumulation mode. So in accumulation mode, the concentration of holes near the surface, let's call it P -accum accumulation, P -ac, is going to be equal to ni e to the power of e fermi in accumulation mode 
minus E Fermi I or the intrinsic Fermi level. So this is the difference we are talking about, which is obviously smaller than the difference in the uh, bulk. So let's call uh, the concentration of holes in the bulk P bulk. So let's call that, uh, let's call it P bulk or P flat band because it is both the concentration deep in the bulk and the concentration in flat band. And it's going to be equal to Ni E to the power of E um, Fermi in flat band minus E Fermi I over KT. Now, uh, if we divide the two concentrations by each other, we're going to get P accumulation by P bulk is equal to E to the power of E Fermi accumulation minus E Fermi flat band over KT. Now, if you look at the difference between E Fermi in accumulation and E Fermi in flat band, it's this difference. So it's the difference between the two Fermi levels deep in the bulk and near the surface. This difference is actually equal to the amount of bending that we have added to the system relative uh, to the flat band condition, which is equal to the surface potential of the, uh, of the silicon. So this is equal to the surface potential, and we're going to end up with e to the power of q v surface by kt. Now, P bulk is actually equal to Na, which is the doping level in the substrate. And so we can reach the conclusion that P accumulation is equal to Na e to the power of QV surface by KT. This is the level of holes that we see near the surface. And it's actually true that this is the level of holes that we see near the surface, regardless of the mode of the, uh, of the MOS capacitor. So it is equal uh, to this expression if the capacitor is in equilibrium if it's in flat band, if it's in accumulation, or if it is in any other mode. So let's see what happens to the, uh, to the uh, band diagram when we apply a potential which is opposite to the potential we just applied. So in this case, we apply a positive potential to the gate and a negative potential to the substrate uh, or the body. Now, when we apply the positive potential to the body, we attracted holes towards the surface of the oxide. In this case, we are applying an electric field that would lead to the um, repulsion of uh, holes from the surface of the uh, oxide. So we push away holes from the surface, and when we push away enough holes, we will actually form a depletion region below the surface of the oxide. And so what we're talking about here is that we form a depletion region near the surface of the oxide, so we deplete the silicon near the surface. If we keep applying more positive potential, we increase the thickness of this depletion region. So we call this mode depletion mode. And it happens when we start to apply a positive potential to the uh, gate uh, plate of the capacitor. We can see it here in the band diagram because when we apply a positive potential to the gate and a negative potential to the body, we push the body band diagram up we can see that the difference in the Fermi levels reflects the external potential applied, whereas the difference in the vacuum level ex expresses more than that because there is a, uh, a bending in the vacuum level at equilibrium. We can see that the uh, Fermi level near the surface is approaching uh, the, the intrinsic Fermi level, which is an expression of the depletion of this layer from its holes. So we are reaching a very low level of carrier concentration, which is uh, actually equal to uh, the intrinsic level. Now, what we care about most is calculating the amount of charge next to the oxide. This will be a depletion charge, an ionic charge in this case. But when we uh, talk about inversion mode, it will become an electron charge. And this is really important because it is the charge that will move through the channel of a MOSFET. We can do this by using the uh, basic equation VGB is equal to V oxide plus V surface minus V flat band. And by also using uh, the um, Gaussian equation for continuity of charge at the surface, which says that the permittivity of the oxide multiplied by the electric field in the oxide is equal to the permittivity of silicon multiplied by the electric field in silicon plus any surface charge that accumulates in silicon. If there was surface charge in, at the oxide, it would be added to the other side of the equation. Now, we can generally assume that there will be more 
voltage drop on the oxide than on the silicon, there will be much more voltage drop on the oxide because it has a much higher uh, resistivity. And therefore, we can approximate VGB as approximately equal V oxide minus V flat band. In this case, we have uh, we have considered V surface to be negligible next to uh, uh, the uh, oxide drop. We can also say that epsilon oxide times the electric field on the oxide is equal to the surface charge in silicon, uh, where we have we have basically neglected the electric field in silicon because. Uh, because the drop on silicon is going to be much lower than that on the oxide. Using these two equations, we can start to look at um, the accumulated charge in depletion mode, and from that we can start talking about uh, inversion.